So uh, with that, we'll have you turn your Bibles to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, we'll start reading verse 24. And I uh, appreciate Pastor Billy allowing me uh, time to get up here and speak to y'all on our graduate Sunday. But if you find your place there at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, we'll stand for the reading of God's Word. It says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to attain a, a perishable crown, but for we are do it for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight as one, or not as one, uh, who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Let's pray. Father God, may you add the blessings upon the reading of the teaching of your word, and may our hearts be open to receive what you have for us this morning. In the name we pray. Amen. So this morning, I wanted to talk to you about setting the pace. Uh, setting the pace in our life. A lot of times, we we get started on a lot of things, uh, but some, some of the things that we do, we're kind of forced into be uh, starting projects or events very quickly. Other times we have time to kind of think about and make plans and do that. But in everything that we're doing, uh, there's a sort of a pace that we need to set for ourselves. Now, with different personalities and different uh, physical abilities and mental capacities and whatever you want to, uh, capacity you want to put on there, uh, we, all, we all have different speeds. Would you all agree with that? I think we have different speeds. I, me, I'm like incredibly fast with everything. Yeah, some of y'all know the difference in that. Uh, I got my speed. Some of y'all have a different speed. We see some people that are working around here, and they're, they're going 90 miles an hour. It's amazing. But the point of setting a pace is, one, knowing the rules, knowing yourself, knowing the uh, abilities of what you're doing. If you're racing in a car... There are certain restrictions that a car has. There are certain safety standards that they have. When we start a race, there's a pace car that sets it up. When there's a, a caution, they slow everything down. Not to a stop. Nothing comes to a halt. But they set a pace that is safe, but never stopping. They try not to ever stop. We set paces when we're training people in athletics. Uh, they're trained to to uh, be able to push their bodies to a certain limit. They have a certain cadence. They have a certain uh, marker. They have certain things that they have to uh, abide by and push themselves to. Uh, we have many different ways we could, we could think about setting the pace. But in our life, when we're thinking about uh, running that race with God, it is something that uh, we really need to take a look at. We look at the verses here in verse 24. It says, it says, do you not know that those who run a race, they, they all run. Everybody in a race, they, have a, they run, right? If we're talking about a running race. Now, if you're not running, there's a problem, right? So we all, that's pretty much clear. It's not something we got to sit there and just totally just re, uh, you know, re-say all what a race is. But Paul, he's, he, in his wisdom here, he's saying, you know, just remember, if we're saying we're in a race, we all are involved. We are all running. You can't say that you're part of something and not do anything. That's something to think about. And he says, but there's going to be one that receives a prize, but run in a way that you may obtain it, that you may obtain the prize. So I want to, when you start, first thing we want to think about when setting the pace, we want to start with that win in mind. Start with that win. Failure should not be a part of an option that we have in our, in our race. In setting up what we want to do, if we're getting ready, we're prepping for the race, we're like, this is, these are the things that I want to do. This setting the pace, setting the, our mindset, setting our, our goals, we want to start with that win. I want to be able to say, I want to reach that finish line, and I don't want to be last. I want to be first. 
I want to be able to, to reach that. And with all that I have, I want to obtain it. Some of the problems that we have in our Christian life, a lot of us, we receive Christ, whether it's at the altar or praying with someone at home or uh, in, a, in a meeting place that we were talking with someone about our life and we accept Christ, we start off well, but we forget that there is a whole race to be run. There is a whole other part of it. There is a whole other uh, uh, intersections and, and waypoints and checkpoints and different scenarios that comes up. We need to ready ourselves. But a lot of times we right after we are saved or receive Christ or even in the middle of our life with the Lord, sometimes we, just, we, we, we satisfy with failure. We satisfy with that point that, well, I'm never going to make it. I'm not going to be able to reach it. Paul says here, he says, when you run, when you, when you get going, when you have that what God has put in you and your heart and your mind to, to reach this goal, to accomplish this task, he says, run and start with that win. Know that the end is there, and you need to run in a way to obtain the prize. Not reach it, not just touch it, not just look at it. He says, obtain it. That means be able to put your hands on it and grasp it, and you take ownership of that. You have done the task. You have completed it. We need to stop going into things thinking that we'll just get it halfway and somebody will pick it up. Somebody else will cover it. We need to finish all the things we start. Failure should not be that option. I love how he, he puts in there is that we should, that we may obtain it, that prize. You have what? You have the ability. God puts that in us. There are some times we are not strong enough. There are some times that we are pretty tired. We have jobs. We have families. We have responsibilities. And sometimes God gets put down on that list. But guess what? He will give us exactly what we need to finish and obtain the goal that he has set for us. You want to set the pace in life? Begin with that win in mind. Begin with that, I can start and I can finish with the help of God. The second thing we look at is, as we go down the scriptures, it says, in everyone who, in verse 25, everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. It says, now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. I look at that and I say, well, I sure do like trophies. I sure would like to have something. I got a trophy we're pretty proud of back here, right, Bob? We, got, we did a barbecue competition, came number eighth in the county. Bob's team was 10th or something like that, but we, we don't think about that. We got that number eight. Wrong here, Bob. There we go. All right. Uh, but we have, a, we have a great time in competition. We have a great time obtaining what we want to get. You know, life is full of those opportunities where we can rejoice and we can celebrate in those things that we can accomplish. We have goals. These ones that's graduated, these ones that are, have completed or are completing their school year, there's a lot of things. You look back and they accomplished it. Some's going to walk home with a certificate. Some may even uh, get a medal. And you'll say, wow, look what I've got to I've accomplished. I did it. And we get encouraged. And those that, that are having struggles with that, I hope they could look at those and say that it is attainable. A little hard work, you can do it. But this prize that we receive, says some of these are, some people are looking for perishable crowns. Crowns that, or a prize, or a goal, that's more of an earthly standard. See, we take more consideration on what the world thinks is important. And we make those important things in our life. We make that the goal. We make that the point of our home, of our personal life, of our friends. 
what the world thinks. And guess what? The Bible says there's going to be a day where every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, that all these things that we thought were important, all these things that we put higher than God, they're going to come tumbling down and they're going to be worthless. And we're going to stand before God and He's going to question us about these things. But there's also other things that we can do in this life that God has given us the ability, and it says that we want to run and obtain those things that are not perishable, those things that are going to be everlasting. I always, when we talk to the, the, the youth about these things, I say, do things that has an eternal value to it. And the eternal value that we teach and that the Bible teaches us is the only thing that is eternal is God and the life that he gives us. That is what is eternal. The Bible shows and he teaches, even this world will pass away, and behold, all things will come new. I look at that and I look at, at the second point. It says, looking at these prizes and these things we want to obtain, it says, I, I think that we need to keep our heads up and avoid the traps that are in life that will make you stumble. The world paints a picture and paints those crowns and those goals as something that we just want to go after. And they're good. They make us feel good. And they, they look good on a shelf. They look good hanging up. They look good in other places. They make us have little bragging rights, if you will. But guys, it's time that we start bragging more about our God, our Savior than we do ourselves. Because as we look and we see the success we have in life, we see how God has blessed and forgiven us and set us back on that uh, straight and narrow. And has, as when we do fall, He forgives and sets us back. As He doesn't, when we mess up, He doesn't leave us on the side. He, he chastens after us and helps to bring us back through conviction. He will forgive us. But we often want to hang on to that prize that looks so good. Uh, there's a, uh, with hockey and the Stanley Cup, y'all know about that? That is like one of the most prized, most prized trophies out there. And there are fans, there's even players, that their life goal is to just touch that trophy. That's a world standard. When God, in doing and following and setting that pace and going with that pace he sets before us, knowing that he will let us finish, he will give us the strength to do it, you don't have to dream about touching. You can obtain it. You don't have to stumble and fall and get tripped up and get your mind all confused about all this other stuff. God says if you'll seek Him first, all these other things will fall into place. You can obtain the goals here. You attain and be in the pace setting that God has put you in. Still enjoy life. Still get goals. Still get prizes. Still be able to uh, push yourself to the limits and enjoy things. But you're fighting for that prize that He has set and not something that mere man has gotten a hold of to put in front of you. I'll be the first to admit it. There's a lot of things out there that's very enticing. Things I want to work for. Goals I want to reach, I want to, I, I want to do. I, I've heard people, you know, we talk about a bucket list or something that you want to achieve in life. You know, there's all kinds of things like that you can put out there. And I could share some of those with you, but... I want you to see not everything that we have on this side is bad, horrible, don't touch. But everything over here, you need to get a hold of. Everything that God has for us, we need to grab with open arms. And guess what? The stuff over here, he'll filter out what you don't need. We got to trust him. We have to have that faith in God and grow that back in our lives again. Like when we asked Him to forgive us of our sins and we felt the love of Jesus 
and the love of God come into us, we felt like we could take on the world, and then we jumped and forgot about pre- pre- preparing ourselves. We, thought, we forgot about what does God have for me. And we lost the pace, and it just slowed down even more. We need to be careful so we don't get distracted. Verse 27, it says, uh, or end of, uh, well, verse 26, sorry. It says, therefore I, I run, not with uncertainty. I fight not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it up to, into subjection. See, we don't need to get distracted and be disqualified. There's certain, again, there's certain rules or certain guidelines that we have. And I, I like Paul's uh, thing here when he talks about boxing, talks about getting in shape, getting, p- being prepared. You know, one of the worst things you can do in a boxing match is start flailing your arms around like a, just somebody wanting to beat somebody up. One, you lose any bit of training that you had is out the window. You have no strength compared to a man that sticks to his side and punches with his body. Your arms will give out very quick. And you will lose that battle. And a lot of times you'll you'll probably start swinging and hitting and hitting in places that uh, will disqualify your fight or not even qualify your punch. See, in boxing, every punch is a point. Every connection you make is one step closer to the win. But when you're out there just going at it, you're not connecting to the point that it helps you in your fight. A lot of us Christians, we get in a point sometimes that we go out and we want to do all these things. We we don't have a pace. We just have a... We just, it's like a to-do list or a get-this-done list or if I'm busy, if, I'm, if I have action, if I'm doing something in the church, if I'm helping one person out. We need to be taught and learned from God's Word, not just from personal opinion, that He has a plan for each one of us, that He has a guiding voice that He instills in us through the Holy Spirit to discipline us, to teach us, to set us on that path that we will be able to go in and we will hunker down and we can fight and push to the point that we can have uh, what he's put in front of us completed. Sometimes when I read this verse that says that he brings, I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, that's one of those I'm like, man, is he actually talking about physical strength and talking about physical fitness I hope not because I don't, I, I'd probably fail in that big time but I know in my spiritual life if I have this Bible and I put it to use by reading and studying it when I get my mornings started in the right way when we pray, when we go and we have problems in life and want to have good, solid advice to not let this be the last resource that we use, but one of the first resources. Getting and going to talking to people that we know are trustworthy, that know the Word, and that will share the Word and not just personal opinion. You know, I look in things that distract us, and there is so much advice out there today that when you've got, got the pace setting and you need to know what good advice so you can keep that pace in a smooth going transition along with God if we start listening to all that sideline advice that's outside the word of God it's so easy to get tripped up again God's word it says it's the same today yesterday and forever and you can trust that the things that people faced with thousands of years ago that was addressed in the Bible if you look at it it's, it's very similar almost word for word in cases what we face today people say well the bible is old fashioned I don't need it anymore well, you are so wrong you need to open it and read it it's like some of the information that we give out some people 
be like, well, I never heard that before. I've never seen that before. Well, have you looked at it? Be amazed what comes. But if we get distracted, if we start pulling from everything else, even in sports and things like that, that we all know the rules and regulations and things forwards and backwards, you know that if you get distracted, you don't follow, you do things on your own way, you can become disqualified. So fight, so work, so bring your mind, your body into that subjection of the Word of God. And it's not just so we can have a pen that says, I'm the fancy Christian. It says so that when I preach, when I teach others, that I myself may not be disqualified. What makes a good athlete, what makes a good pace setter is someone that knows and follows the guidelines. Now, nobody's ever perfect. We can go back and we can look at some famous people in history and look at all their accomplishments, but guess what? There's failures along with all those. As Christians, I don't want you to sit here and think that I'm standing before you and say, well, you're, you're not perfect, so you got a big problem. Well, none of us is perfect. We all fall short of the glory of God. But the, the promise that we as Christians have is that the very one that saved you is the one that remains in you. And he will help and he will forgive. And he will try and he will continue to make that path straight. That is a promise that he has, that he's given us. One of the last things we'll look at, it says... When we're setting the pace, one of the things to look at is to learn from others' mistakes. In chapter 10, we get a good example of others' mistakes. Now, not to look at this as a, you know, again, we're all just horrible people and there's no sense even trying. It's the point that there's mistakes made, there's consequences for it, but you can keep your head up. You don't have to... Uh, go in all these pitfalls the word of God has always he says he won't won't put more on you than you can handle God says that he is with you and what is put on you and this is my paraphrased version of this but with what he has put on you he has given you the strength to work through now yeah you can't handle it we weren't made to handle stress and strife and all this stuff that we deal with every day we weren't made for that we were created to worship God but through him that is how we overcome and how we find strength but chapter 10 just first uh, few verses here just listen to what this says it says moreover brethren I do not want you to be unaware uh, uh, be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized uh, into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual fruit, food, and they, ate, they all drank from the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that, fo uh, that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with most of, of them, God was not well pleased. For their bodies were scattered in the wilderness... And now these things uh, became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink and they rose up early to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by the serpents, nor complain, as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them as, as examples, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands Take heed, lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you except 
such as common to man. But God is faithful. God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with temptation, he will make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. There are so many promises in that verse. When you hear the words, learn from others' mistakes, sometimes we have such a negative view on that, we don't even want to allow that to come in our hearts. But as chapter 10 so eloquently puts and lets us see the Israelites in their travels uh, through the wilderness, it puts it in a way that helps us to see clearly not just their mistakes, but the examples of what they learned, how they went through. We will all make mistakes, and we'll all have consequences for it. But the one greatest thing that we need to learn is that we need to realize we're a sinner, and we need a Savior. If you haven't realized that this morning, you can take time today to ask Jesus into your heart, forgive you from your sins, and start that pace with him that he can set before you and reach obtainable goals and obtainable prizes and have things that are set before you that are not just going to perish and fall away, but things that are tried and true and that are sure in the faithfulness of God. And he will hold your head up. You won't have to fall. And if you do, he's there to pick you up. But we don't have to rely on just failure. We can start with the win in mind and not even think of failure as an option. If you don't know him this morning, I ask that as we come time for an invitation, that you would either come forward or come talk with us, or maybe pray where you are, that Jesus would forgive you of your sins, and you would ask him to come into your life. He says, if we believe in our heart and confess, confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, he says, we will be saved. For those of us that know Christ, maybe we've gotten to a point where we don't trust him as much. Maybe the race of life has gotten too hectic for us. Maybe it's gotten to the point that I just, you know, failure's that option that we've embraced. Friends, I tell you, the more I read the Bible, the more I learn that that is just a lie from Satan himself to stop us dead in our tracks, to put whatever stumbling block in front of you so it just doesn't seem worth it. I pray as we come to a close today that we will all be able to see that God is for us. And he is with us. Even when man stands against us, we can stand with God and we'll always win. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. This morning, I just ask if God is speaking to you in any way, that you will respond to him as he's responded to you. The altar will be open. We'll ask you to come. We'll be standing here with you. I'll ask Pastor Billy to come up here and he'll stand with me. And we'll have this time of invitation, but let's pray. Father God, as we come to this time of close and make a decision with you, Lord, I pray that you work in our lives, Lord, that we uh, listen to you, we follow you and what you say. Thank you for letting us be able to set a pace in life that is obtainable, Lord, to be able to reach goals and prizes, Lord, and be able to see the work that you've done in our life, be able to be uh, something that as we look as, an, as a success, but, Lord, as you look at it as being obedient, Lord, help us where we failed you and help us to grow and help us to strengthen in your word. We ask this in your name. Amen.